What is up, guys? We are back at it again in another Twin Motion video. And again, we're looking at lights. I mean, I know you're probably beaten down by the number of times we've looked at lights and placing light sources and all that, but we're going to do it again. And we're going to do it again because I have a great way that I am planning to use from here on out as far as adding light sources to lights because it is really important to get those things looking correct in an easy way because let's be honest it's not easy to drag this spotlight in and try and put it exactly where you want on a light it just is not easy so we don't want to try to do that I mean that's just kind of the way it is so before we get into it if you happen to learn something throughout the course of this video I really hope you do please demolish that like button it really helps me out a lot okay so we're back in this dark room again or whatever light room however you want to call this but we're looking at all these different types of lights and we've seen this before but we want to make sure we add light sources to these lights because right now these lights aren't on they are just lights that exist in this particular room which doesn't look that great without actual light sources so how are we going to how are we going to do this well my first thought was well we can take these this light and literally we just replace the whole light with a light source and then come back to our data smith link and then use the re-import deleted objects and then we could in a sense get the light source back in place or the light back in place after replacing the light with the light source where you'd want it so let's see what happens and this is just a can light it's from revit it's really nothing special so here we go i'm going to right click this and replace and then i just want to drag a spotlight in there i will replace well the light's gone we expected that but the light source is down here and we've, we've kind of seen this before in previous videos because it it kind of has something to do with the association of the light, like the host level, like it's all the way down to level one, all this kind of stuff. So we're not trying to get into that, but I want to undo that because I obviously don't want my light to leave. But actually, if I come back now to my data smith and I decide to re-import deleted objects, I actually don't get that light source back, which is kind of silly. So I'm going to undo that again. I don't really want that. I, I want to keep my light. <laughs> So how are we going to do this? Like, what what are we actually doing? Well, you can you can look at this however you want, but what we're going to have to do is edit the families of these light fixtures and add something else to the light that we can use to replace. And we're doing that because we don't want to end up replacing the light itself, but just something that we've added to the light that will serve as something that we can use to replace with an actual light source. Okay. All right, so let's get into this. So we are going to start with the basic can because it's it is pretty simple. So let's come over here to Revit, and here we go. I I don't really need to do anything except select one of these cans, and I'm going to edit the family, and I'm we'll show you what we're going to have to do. Basically, we're going to add something in here that we're going to use to ultimately replace and add a light source. So looking at this now there's you can really do this wherever you want basically where you want the light source to be so actually let's go to a, a an elevation view that would make more sense so here we are and we can see you know where the light source is i mean where it's coming from and that makes sense uh, this is the light source in revit you know unfortunately this doesn't translate into 3d at all and doesn't translate into twin motion but this is where we'd like the light source to be because it you know, it's a can light, it makes sense, there's a fixture up here, the body, whatever, and then the light source is coming out of here. Perfect. So what can we do about that? Well, we essentially need to add a model that exists at this location. And once we add a model that exists at that location, we can then reload our family into Revit and then Twinmotion and end up replacing not this whole light source, not the whole light fixture itself, but just this new little model that we're adding in here. So moving forward, I'm going to call that a nub because we're trying to make this thing the tiniest little thing. You'll never see it. And we want to make sure that it's completely separate from the light because we're going to use that to replace with the light source. So actually, we want to go or at least start in a floor plan view. And remember, I want to try and make this as small as possible. So what I want to do is just get the center point. I'm going to, I'm going to make a basic extrusion, really nothing fancy here. And then make it a circle. You know, I just want, I want this center point. That's really it. And 
again, you can make this as big as you want, but we don't want it that big. I mean, we really, there's no reason for this thing, whatever it is, this nub to be that big. So I want to make this, you know, really as small as I can at this point, maybe just an eighth of an inch of radius. Okay. And then honestly, I don't want this to be a foot. I mean, I, I absolutely don't want this to be a foot. So maybe an inch, maybe half an inch, maybe just an eighth of an inch. That's fine. And so I'll finish that. We don't need a material. We don't need anything like that. But that's it. I'm going to go to my front view, and I could see, well, where is this thing? This thing. Well, if I go to a 3D view, I can see that it's actually on level 1. And I don't want it there. Of course I don't. But before we get any further, I want to make sure that I'm making this clear because we are... And I'm going to say it again, we're replacing this nub, this single nub, not the whole light fixture, with a light source in twin motion. And before we get farther than that, I want to make sure that it's aware that we need to actually make this model its own family. We can't just make this in this family because if we decide to replace this object, then we'll be stuck with replacing not only this new little nub, this little object that we have, but the whole light fixture along with it, which we don't want. So I'm going to delete this actually. And instead of trying to do something within this family, I'm going to go to file and make a new family. We're just going to make a single nested family, nothing too crazy. And I can honestly use really anything that I want, but a generic model is perfectly fine. And so, like I said before, we want to make this pretty small, not big, nothing special, basic extrusion, a circle. We're going to come down here and maybe just an eighth of an inch. I'm going to zoom in here. There we go. And again, I might make this an eighth of an inch tall because that's perfect. So let's come here. And I'll go to my 3D view, and we can see that's it. Really tiny thing. No material. Nothing is needed at all. And so let's go ahead and you know make sure we save this. Of course, we always want to save these types of things because that makes perfect sense. That's what we want to do. And I'm just going to call this replace. And... We want, because we're going to replace this object with a light source in twin motion. And this is going to be associated into our light source, or into our light fixture. So what I want to do now is load this into my light fixture. And here we go, into this downlight family. So, okay, I, at this point, I want to make sure I'm in a plan view, which I, here I am in a ground floor plan. And I want to just dump this wherever. It doesn't matter. And I don't want to try and place it in the center because what I'm going to do is specifically align it to the center. So whenever I align here, I want to make sure I'm not selecting this light source reference. I want to tab and select that reference plane because that reference plane is determining that origin point. So here we go. This is fine. I have my alignment there. And we want to make sure that we end up locking that right there. And then again, we want to do it with the exact same axis. Make sure I tab to the reference plane, come over here to my object, and then there we go, lock that in place. Okay, so we're good in plan. Now we just need to determine where it is vertically. So again, we'll now go to a front view, and we'll try and find this thing, which maybe it's on the ground. Absolutely it is. And so we just need to move this up all the way. And so again, we are going to align, and at this point I will now align to the, the reference plane looking at this light source right there. And... I just want to select the top right there. But what I actually want to do is select the bottom. And it's because the reason I want to select the bottom is because the bottom is where it's technically hosted to. And so in a sense, this is where the light would be placed. And so I want to select the bottom. And of course, I want to lock that in place. So there we go. Look at that. So right now, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So basically, just to run through it again, now that we have this here, we're going to have this whole light fixture come in, and but now it has this little nub piece in it, okay? And so what we're going to do is see this nub piece separate from the light fixture in twin motion and just replace the little nub with a particular light source that we want. So great, easy. And again, I want to actually save this because it makes sense that I would want to have this be a new type of light fixture because I have actually edited this beyond the point where it's just a normal light fixture because I have technically added things to it. And so I want to make sure that I have ultimately saved this. And with this saved, I will load this into my project. And it's going to, well, of course, we want to override it, but at that point, we want to then 
make sure we come in here and you know we have four of these placed. We can select all in view, select them all like this or not, however you want to do it. But I actually need to change the family because I have downlight recessed can, and then I actually made a new one which I saved, and so I can put it there. So I need to actually use those families instead. Okay, so now we're basically ready to sync this back into Twinmotion. Let's go to my data smith here. I want to synchronize. We're going to go back to Twin Motion. There's Twin Motion. Okay, so let's look at these lights. Let's specifically zoom in on the light here. I want to make sure I'm slowed down so I can actually move and get there. There we go. And so there, there's my nub. That's cool. Okay, but I want to expand this, and I want to see my light here. And so whenever I replace this, we're going to see what happens. Of course, we can see there's my light fixture, and everything's going away. So at this point... I'm a little scared because I don't see another object here. I don't see anything else. I can't select this object. So I think I know what's going to happen. And I know actually, I know what's going to happen because I've done this before, but I'm going to replace the object. And there we go. Well, this looks very familiar. Unfortunately, this is the exact same. So you might be asking, why the heck did we do what we just did? Well, there's one little step that's missing, and it, has, it might be the most important. So what we need to do, again, is go back to Revit. And I need to edit my family. And not only do I need to edit this family, but I need to edit the nested little nub family that I've added just because there's a particular setting that we need to make sure that we have. And with, when I'm finally in the little nub family here, the only thing we need to worry about besides making it and placing it and all that, which we've done, but in the future if you're doing this, make sure that this particular element over here where you see shared is checked. And so what is this doing? Well, this basically means that, and we can read it here for a second, Revit recognized the family separately from the host family. So what does that mean? Well, this little nub is going to be recognized differently or independently than the light fixture family itself. Okay, so, all right, that's kind of interesting because that means that this is going to be independent from the light fixture family, meaning that we can select this in twin motion as opposed to the light fixture and this. Okay, so far so good. Let's go ahead and load this back into my light source, or like my light fixture. We wanna make sure that we save this, sure. I'm going to overwrite it here, and then I need to reload, of course, my light fixture family into my Revit project. Yes, I'd like to save that, okay. And once I do that, we won't even have to change the type because we've already changed the type. We'll just overwrite that version there. And then at this point, I'm going to Datasmith, synchronizing, going back to Twin Motion. And okay, we see the exact same thing, which is exactly what we wanted to see because, duh, we didn't actually change the look of anything. But what I want to point out here is whenever I select this fixture and I hide the fixture, the nub is still there. So what the heck? Where's the nub? Like what? <laughs> well, we come up here, we select this we actually have the option of selecting this completely separately. And so it's a generic model here, and we see replace there. So the reason I called it replace is because I want to do something like this. I might want to do something like mm, replace, search replace. Well, did you look at that? All of these here are these specific nubs, and I can, you know, of course, select them all. They're on all four of these lights, and this is already looking good because... I want to use these four objects, there, 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 and there, as things that I can do to replace within the light fixture to add a light source, exactly where I need it to be. <laughs> so here we go. Here's the fun part. So I'm just going to select all these. So j just know that you know this folder is associated with this element. And so these are technically four objects, but they're coming in as eight because each one of the specific objects has its own folder. Don't care about that. I just want to select them all. And then we're going to replace. And then again, the spotlight. And now let's start replacement. <laughs> Would you look at that? Like absolute magic, it works. And not only does it work, but it's exactly where we want it. Exactly where we want it. And I, it obviously has taken many videos for me to get to this point and realize, hey, I can do this. But we did finally do it. That is how you're going to... If you want to ensure that you're getting these light sources in the exact place that your light is, you're going to have to do something like this. Add some little dealy, 
nub, whatever it is, to your light fixture family. Make sure it's shared, nested in. It becomes its own element and recognized as its own element in twin motion, which is exactly what we have here, and it's perfect. And we can use those little nubs, whatever it is, wherever it is on the light fixture, to replace those and add light sources. Fantastic. So we could go through all these other lights, but, you know, this would apply to anything. I could have used a linear light if I wanted to. And if that were the case, for example, these lights here, instead of adding the nub, you know, wherever, I would just add it in the middle and make sure that everything's centered up. And I'd, I would just take note of the length of these lights. You know, these are types of things that we can do pretty simply. And, you know, of course, these little wall mounted lights are basically the exact same as these can lights. It's just based on where you'd put the little nub. And so the nub itself would probably end up being somewhere around here, you know, makes sense. So I'm very excited about this and to be able to use it in the future and make adding lights so much easier. Again, we could add it here and we'd, we just get the same result. We could add, add a little nub here and then that's it. We have, we'd probably use an omnidirectional light for something like this and it would place it right where we need it to be. So, you know, honestly, that will do it for this video. And I know we've looked at placing light sources probably three, four videos now, but finally I think we have reached the pinnacle. This is it. So I'm not saying ignore the rest. Those are good videos to watch because it will get you to this point. It will help you understand why it's difficult to just place a spotlight and how you might do that. Because there are other ways, you know, there are other ways. You might have a weird, weird, weird light fixture that doesn't really work well. And, but all that to say, I would still first look to using these types of nubs, these types of objects that you can use in these light fixture families to replace and ultimately give yourself a really easy time in adding light sources to these lights. Very simple stuff. And I think I would say the last thing that I might add is that, you know, I, I specifically added the word replace to those lights. But, you know, let's say we get to the point where we're, you know, we've made cubes in our parking lots and we want to replace those cubes with a bunch of cars or whatever. If we name everything replace, then of course everything called replace will end up being populated here. Like these, these four, of course, that we use. If I had a bunch of other things, basically what I'm saying is name it replace, but have another way of organizing whether it's a light fixture or it's a car, or it's a person, or it's a you know a f piece of furniture, anything that you need to replace, trees, whatnot. So maybe it's replaced underscore something. I, it, that's up to you. But from an organizational standpoint, that's what I would do beyond just naming and adding replace to it. So cool. That will do for this video. I really hope you learned something because when I discovered this, I absolutely was in love with this and I'm so excited to share it with you. Please do share it with others, of course, but if you did have to learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out very much and also tells me that you might have learned something and that this might have been a little bit helpful for you. So cool. Very, very cool. I'm excited about this and using it in the future. So I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.